Okay. <clears throat> Good morning. I'm trying to get this invite to work. So just hold with me for a second. Let's see. I should have sent you the invite, Amy, if you're on. But of course it probably didn't. Sorry guys, just bear with me for a moment here. Okay, Amy Hale, you should have gotten there. Okay, hold on a second. Okay, I think it's adding. It says it's adding, and then we'll have to figure out if the screens are right. Connecting. Yay! There you are. Hey. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I can hear okay, you. Okay, I can hear you. Good. Okay, let me double check that everybody can see us. If anybody's watching, if you guys could comment and let us know that you can hear everything. This is my second time using this split screen thing, so. <laughs> You're brave. <laughs> Let's see. I think the only thing is when it's land when it's landscape like i have trouble knowing where to look i feel weird like not looking at you know what yeah, i'm saying uh, like not looking at the picture but looking at the camera yeah. <laughs> so if our eyes are weird guys it's because <laughs> this is all new because <laughs> we don't know yeah, what we're doing exactly okay so it looks like yep they can hear us and see us so i will introduce myself then you can introduce yourself and then we'll get to talking so i'm carrie i blog at stonesoupfor5.com and I wrote the meditation guide that I dragged Amy along into doing with me and I'm so glad you did and um, we're, we're just going to talk about week two but um, we'll do that a little bit we'll just kind of do that a little bit if you guys have any questions ask them I have a couple screens here so if I'm looking away I'm reading your questions and um then I just wanted to talk to Amy a little bit because I want you guys to know her because she's awesome and her stuff on Instagram is oh. wonderful and you guys need to follow her there. Um, but she just does this meditation kind of automatically. And I mean, I know it's taken years and years to get to where you are, but it's great how she just does daily things, right? That are uh, meditation right. that's totally doable in a short amount of time. So I asked her to bring it like a bunch of her journals and stuff. So anyway, Amy, if you could tell us a little bit about you and then we'll get into the guide. Sure. Um, hey everybody, I'm Amy. I live very near Memphis, um, just a tiny town just east of Memphis. Um, I'm married and I have three kids, two of them. Um, do not live at home anymore. I have a 28-year-old, a 21-year-old, 21 and a 14-year-old. And I um, accepted Christ when I was like eight years old and spent most of my life um, not reading my Bible <laughs> and only discovered um, just how awesome it is probably about five years ago. I started uh, the habit the daily habit of reading it and like Carrie was talking about meditating on it and it just changed my life. And so, yeah, I kind of have, I joke, I have a little Instagram ministry where I just share my passion for it. I love to share um, when I discover um, new methods of study, like what Carrie is teaching us in this, you know, meditation 119. Um, I love to share quiet time tips, prayer tips, and um, as I have started my Instagram account and shared these things, I have learned, as Carrie has learned, I'm sure that there are a lot of women that are hungry to get in God's word and to know him more um, through scripture. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm just, uh, I'm just on fire for God and for sharing the things that he shows me in his word, and um, that's about it. Yeah. And I'm excited to finally meet you, Carrie. You were talking about um, 
Amy does all these awesome things. I can remember even years ago seeing your work like on Pinterest and going, that is so cool. And I want to do that one day. Like I want to share things that just like really help people and teach people. So, I mean, you even, you went before me, I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's cool. And we were, Amy and I were talking a little bit yesterday about how it's neat how God takes complete strangers. I mean, Amy lives across the country from me and uh, brings them together around his word. Yeah. It's really, really neat. So I'm excited yeah. to talk today. But uh, before we get into like your everyday kind of meditation stuff, uh, we should probably talk about the guide. And week two, and you had posted... A couple of pictures. So you have a, you're doing a two page spread, right? Yeah. Um, I'm, you know, when I first started, you know, last week, I didn't really know. And I think you would probably say everybody doesn't have to do it exactly like the way you're mm -hmm. doing it, you know? Um, but I started, I did last week a little differently. I was like doing all my journaling, like just on a single page when I would answer a question. But when I came up with my phrase, um, you know, my, um, what do you call Word that? or phrase. I mean, you're just calling it a yeah. word or it doesn't have like an official name. I should have anything. an official. But when I, fi when I finally came up with that, I was like, oh, okay. Now I it was like that kind of helped me understand how cool it is to put that in the center of the spread and write everything around it. Like, cause a long time ago I used to do verse mapping and that's kind of what it reminded me of. Um, so yeah, I mean, I can, um, I mean, I can kind of try to show a picture of it if you want me to, I don't know. Yeah. Um, and I'll tell you that the, I'll open it up. The, um, the phrase that I came up with came from, I'll just tell you this first. I wrote down my scripture in, um, the new living translation. Mm -hmm. I really liked that. Um, and in verse, I think it's seven. Let me make sure. Um, yeah. It's saying, as I learn your righteous regulations, I will thank you by living as I should. And out of all the verses in this passage, boy, that has really <laughs> stuck with me and just really convicted me about when we get to know when we the more we get into scripture the more we get to know god like we're we should be grateful mm -hmm. for him and for everything he's done and guess what like that should show up in our lives mm -hmm. as obedience like that's the that should be the natural result mm -hmm. of our gratitude so i just wrote down for my obedience proves my gratitude mm -hmm. like that was the that's the phrase that I came up with and I don't know if that even sounds good but that's just what no, I, came I up love with. it um and I wrote down you know like Carrie was showing like on the left hand side of the page I wrote the passage in the New Living Translation and then um I did um like the idea I'm doing the is it called level I don't have my guide right in front of me level one or is that yeah. like I, I've um, we've got a new puppy and things are kind of crazy around here. And normally I would totally like go all the way and say like, sign me up for level three. And, um, but I'm like, no, I'm just going to kind of just dip my feet in and just, mm -hmm. we're going to just try to do level one. But I did look ahead. Let me get my guide in front of me. And I, I did answer, like, I liked a couple of the questions that were in the level. Let me see. Here we go. Um, like, um, I did all the level one questions, but then I looked ahead and, and honestly, because I still had a little bit of space on my thing that I wanted to fill in, I liked on the level two on page 19, um, to think about what kind of fruit that it creates in me. Yeah. So I answered that question and I liked the question too. See, that's the thing, Carrie, like another thing, I don't want to jump ahead or no, steal exactly. anything you're going to want to talk about. But like we were talking yesterday about how we've come up with like our morning routines. And it sounds like it's, we're very similar in that we, we know that we, that we need the word 
and we know that we want um, a deeper relationship mm-hmm. with the Lord and, and meditating on scripture is a great big part of that. And so our desperation for that, like leads us to do a search, you know, for different methods and, and you find different things and you see, you know, what works for you. <laughs> like, like I said, like we don't have to do every single, we don't have to answer every single question that Carrie is suggesting that we answer, but there are, there's probably going to be some that jump out at you and go, Ooh, I like that. And I liked the one I've never thought about before when you're studying a passage of scripture and like maybe a principle that it's talking about, about thinking about examples in scripture that you that you've read you know in other in people's lives like where have you seen that in scripture where have you seen the opposite of that in scripture I like that a lot and because we were talking about obedience like I thought about Moses and I'll just show you like um like I wrote down like I thought about Moses and I found a verse that I thought um summed it up really good summed his life up really good Exodus forty sixteen. This Moses did according to all that the Lord commanded him. So Mm -hmm. he did. And I like that. I love um, Caleb's example. Um, The, and this is something that I thought about too, because, um, and I hope it's okay. I'm just kind of jumping around here. Um, Grumbling has been on my mind a lot and complaining and like how that is sin. And so Caleb was like recognized by God as somebody who was, he stood out from others, not only because of his obedience, but because he, he didn't complain. He trusted God and he encouraged others to do the same. And the verse that I found for him was Numbers fourteen twenty four that says, but since my servant Caleb has a different spirit and has followed me completely, mm-hmm. that's what stood out to me when that goes along with obedience. I will bring him into the land and his descendants will inherit it. So I thought about Caleb. I thought about Noah. I thought about when he was building the ark and, and over and over and over, you would hear this phrase repeated. He did just as the Lord commanded. He did just as the Mm -hmm. Lord over and over, which brings me back to obedience, the Hebrew midwives, how they Mm -hmm. feared God more than they feared, um, feared the king and so they did they did not kill the children like they were told to do they and and he rewarded them for god rewarded them for their obedience um and then the best example is jesus i thought about his obedience and um i just i I looked up the verse that says you know where he said nevertheless not my will but yours be done which i think is all tied into obedience so that was what i did like on the column right next to um, the scripture, I just wrote down the examples that I found of um, people in the Bible that led exemplary lives as far as obedience goes. Um, I wrote down, I had trouble at first, Carrie, and I liked how you did say you had like a disclaimer and you're like, um, when you're getting ready to answer these questions, like at first it might not make sense to you, but if you just think about it a little bit, um, where did you say that? Yeah, at the top of page 18 where you said some of these meditation questions may not at first seem to apply. And, and I got a little frustrated at first because I thought when I was thinking about my phrase, obedience proves my gratitude, I thought, okay, I don't know. At first, I wasn't sure how to answer the questions, but it just takes praying through mm-hmm. it and just really thinking mm-hmm. on it. That's what we're talking about. And so I thought, okay, what causes... Um, my obedience and obedient life that proves my gratitude. Well, it's going to start with um, consistent time spent in God's mm-hmm. word. And I drew an arrow because it's kind of like a progression. So consistent time spent in God's word, that's going to lead to a greater knowledge of who God is and what he's done. And then I've got another arrow here, which leads to um, a desire to live a life that pleases and glorifies and points to God. So that's what I wrote down in that section for, you know, like how, how do I cause this? What, what do I do to bring about this obedient life that proves my gratitude? Um, and then I liked, and at first the deliberate part, I was like, okay, well, that kind of almost, I feel like blends in with that other part. But then I was like, no, this, I feel like is more like the practical, like practically, what does this look mm, like? Right. And I just, like, how do I do, do you want to jump in and say anything before I just keep No, no, over? you're doing great. Keep going. There's, you don't want to add anything. People are sending okay. up parts, um, so that means they like what you're doing. 
<laughs> okay, well, okay, good. Um, so um, on the deliberate part, I just, I just wrote just to kind of remind myself, okay, so what does it look like practically? If I want to have an obedient life that proves the gratitude that I have for God, how do I do mm. that? What does it look like? And I said, make prayer and meditation on God's word a priority each day. Um, I would forgive offenses quickly. I wouldn't hold grudges. Um, Mm -hmm. I would go to God first when I'm angry or sad rather than gossiping about it or venting to others. Again, these are things, Mm -hmm. what are the things that I would do to deliberately, you know, live a life that's obedient to God? I would treat others with kindness and respect. I would put their needs above my own. I would celebrate the successes of others rather than being envious of Mm -hmm. them. I would make worship and praise a priority. Um, I would fix my thoughts on Christ and not my circumstances, which might not be great at the moment. Um, And then like um, if I treat it casually, if I treat this thing that I'm talking about casually, what's going to be the result of that? And I said, I I would fall out of fellowship with God. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, and that's the only thing that I really wrote down. And then if I neglected it altogether, if I just altogether just didn't try, wasn't intentional about um, living this obedient life, what would happen? And I said, I would give in to temptation. Mm. I would conform to the Mm. world. I would be selfish. I would complain a lot. I would feel hopeless. I would be discouraged. And I would not take sin very seriously. I would probably make excuses for it. Um, and I did, like I said, I did like that question about what kind of fruit is produced in me. And I wrote down self-control and patience and love. Like if I lived that kind of life, that's what I thought about. I would be a self-controlled person. I would be patient and I would be loving. I sure will, Michelle. And I'm sorry, I'm not even paying attention right now to the comments. I will definitely go back and answer any questions. Yeah. And yes, I will, I'll take good, nice pictures of this and even post it um, where I need to. Um, and then uh, let's see, I'm jumping around here again, but characteristics. So what is this? What are some characteristics of an obedient life? And I said, contentment and joy and peace regardless of my circumstances confidence wisdom praise would always be on my lips humility love um, I would have an active prayer life I would be an image bearer I would mm. show, consistently show what God is like and I would seek to promote unity I would hate sin I don't know if I said that um, and then th- there was another question Carrie that you had said um, so what does God call this Mm -hmm. Um, and I hope I understood this right. I think I did, but that kind of life. And I actually did kind of look through Psalm 119 and sort of some of the Psalms and just kind of looked around for an answer to this. And I said, some of the things that God would call this kind of life would be righteous. I think he would call it success. This is what success looks like to be successful. Mm -hmm. Um, it would be fate. I would be favored upright, faithful, wise, prosperous, um, steadfast, blameless, and blessed. Yeah. Those were the ways that I answered that. Yeah. And I think that's everything on my, that's everything on this spread, it looks okay. like. But I had, I had so much fun doing that. And like you said, when you were introducing me, yes, I have a way that I just kind of journal and I've done it, you know, for a while. And when you invited me to do this, it, I mean, I'm like other, I've seen other women say, oh, I'm having trouble getting started. And we tend to compare, you know, yes. our work to yeah. others. And that's such a trap. We don't need to do that. And it's hard because you want to encourage people. You know, I like to show this and I did post a little glimpse of it on my Instagram yesterday. And you saw there was so much interest. It's like, oh, tell me more about mm-hmm. this. Oh, and, that, and it looks so hard. And you must have needed a lot of tools for that. I like some of the comment. I was like, no, I use my Bible and I answered questions. Mm-hmm. I didn't have a lot of tools. Um, so I like stepping out of my comfort zone and trying something new. And um, I think a lot of people are looking for some kind of magic formula, you know, to study in yeah. the Bible and more and more and more. A lot, maybe some people don't want to hear this. You spend a lot of time reading the passage over and over and over meditating on it and praying Mm -hmm. and talking to God. Like I ask God so many questions about what I'm reading, Mm -hmm. do it because he answers me. That's why I do Mm -hmm. it. Um, 
I just don't want to get into too much about like my routine, but I'll just say that, you know, when I do share something like on my Instagram account, a journal page or something, and people will comment and say, well, I don't have the time to, I wish I had time to do that. And I don't, I wouldn't even know how to do that. And, and the thing is what I post, I don't like sit down and open up my Bible and read it and then just write down all this good stuff. Like it's this process. Like I will read the passage over and over, like so many times, slowly over and over and over. And I will pray. And I will even, a lot of times in the morning after I've read the passage I'm studying, I don't even try to journal about it then. Like I'll go about my day and I can be in my car driving somewhere and just be like, Okay, so God, you know, when I was reading in Psalm 119 this morning, you know, it was saying this, and I'm not sure exactly what that means. And God, would you just, can you just help me to understand, like, just give me an example of what that Mm. looks like. Like, that's literally what I do all day long. And then a lot of times it's maybe uh, late afternoon, even sometimes early evening, that's when I'll sit back down and I'm going to have to plug my phone in because I just got a message that came up, low battery. Um, But I will sit back down then and actually do the journaling. It's after I have read and read and read and prayed and prayed and prayed. I don't just, sit, you know, I don't know if anybody, if, if you were able to sit down and, and read a passage and just write down a bunch of deep, insightful, wonderful stuff, then my hat's off to you. Yeah. But no, I mean, like, it's yeah. going to come through lots and lots of prayer. And excuse me one second while I plug my phone okay. in. So, yeah, like Amy said, I get a lot of people that say that same thing, too. Like, well, I don't know how. I'm not artsy. I, I don't know the Bible well, and that's the great thing about these questions and this method is you don't have to. You can look up cross-references. You pray, pray, pray. Don't, don't neglect that part of it. I think, and like Amy said, a lot of times I'll do the same thing. I'll read through it, and I'll be like, I have no idea yeah. how this even relates to my life today. And then I'll just pray, and I'll go about my day. And because it's like hanging in my head, then I'll see something, I'll hear something, I'll think of something. And it's like that, that's what I needed today. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and sometimes it's really painful. And sometimes it's like a huge conviction in the moment. Oh, that's what you were talking about not to do, God. Um, and sometimes it's just this wonderful, beautiful, grace-filled moment of, I, I don't deserve this kind of love from you. Absolutely. So, yeah, it does take time. It does take effort on our part to focus and to open up the Bible, to make it a habit and a routine, and to go to the Word and to your morning time expectantly. I, you know, when, when I had littles and I was sleep deprived and everything, I would go to the Bible like, I've got to do this. And I'd read through two or three chapters because that was on my plan and have no idea what I was doing. There was no thought involved in it. It was just reading, reading, reading. And then I couldn't even tell you what I read that day. So what this, right. this is trying to get us to do, I think as women, we're, we're so busy checking things off and doing what's right as a Christian that we lose sight of why and who we're doing it to. And so these, mm-hmm. these questions, I feel like these are old, old, old questions from men, you know, centuries ago that I've just kind of picked out of reading and stuff, but they got it and they didn't have, they didn't have concordances and online searches and everything. (laughs) They knew the word of God so well, they could make these cross references and comparisons just because they've spent so much time soaking in the word. And that's what I wanted. I wanted to be this walking, breathing, living uh, word of God, you know, and I'm, And that's what it takes is the coming back to it over and over and over. Like you made such a good point about we're busy and a lot of us have to-do lists, checklists, and it feels, it feels good to check stuff off. And we want to do that also with, you know, reading our Bibles and be like, yes, I did it. And then we feel frustration when we don't feel changed. We don't. Okay. So, and I'll just say like, this was, uh, I'll share this kind of, it's a neat story. I was going through this season where, and we can fall into a rut. Like I'm saying this happened to me even after I established my routine. Uh, So you just have to kind of guard yourself. But um, 
I was feeling like I have no victory in my life. Like I don't have a lot of joy and, <laughs> and I, and I'm like, I don't get it because I'm reading my Bible every day. Like I'm supposed to. So God, I don't understand why I don't feel changed. And hmm. he, it sounds so weird. If I say I had this vision, like, I'm not going to say I had a vision, but I'm going to say that God put a picture in my hmm. head. I'll say it that way of being at this romantic restaurant with my husband and it's a candlelight dinner. And he's talking to me. And y'all, excuse, we got stuff going on here this morning. Um, there's going to be, you might hear some noise, people talking in the background. I did not realize because I didn't communicate with my husband that we have air conditioning repair, man. He's walking in right now. But anyway, so God gave me this picture of being in this romantic restaurant with my husband. It's candlelight. It's so, I mean, just imagine a very romantic setting. My husband is like looking into my eyes and he's like saying the sweetest things to me. But... I'm not picking up on it because I am busy writing down. My husband is wearing a dark suit and his hair looks nice and he's a really kind person and on and on and on. And I would even in this picture in my head, I would even lean over to other people and say, do you see my husband over here? Like he is so great. Like he is so fab He is so this, he's so that the whole time my husband is trying desperately to get my attention. He's whispering sweet things to me and I'm missing out on it. What God was showing me was I was totally approaching his word as almost like an encyclopedia, like just like I was on a fact finding yes. mission, like I was checking something off a list. I'm going, okay, well, what does this tell me about God? Oh, this, this, and this. And I'm going to tell these people, look what the Bible tells me about God and go on with my day. Hello. That's why I was not changed because yes. I was not worshiping him. Yes. And that was one of the things that yes. kind of started me in this unique um, morning routine that I do, the special kind of journaling that I do is because I was like, okay, I need to approach God's word much differently. Yeah. It's not a fact finding mission. Like, yes, I want to get, I want to know God more. And that's the number one reason why I'm opening up his word. But then what do I do with that? Then I, then I praise him. I thank him. I meditate on these things. You know, when I'm going through hard things, I, I'm truly meditating on what I've learned. I'm not just like grabbing some random facts and jotting them down and moving on with life. Like it's, mm. it's meditating. It's coming back to it every day. And like praise and gratitude is so important. Yeah. It really is. So that picture, even though that sounded really weird, like God was really making a yeah. point to me that I... He wanted my attention. He wanted to speak yeah. to me. You know, he wanted fellowship. And I was just there like it was a homework yeah, assignment. Yeah, <laughs> And I love, I love what you said about, you know, he wants us to think and talk. And so many people say, well, I don't know how to meditate. I don't know how to do this. But we do it all the time. I am really good at meditating on my problems. I view them <laughs> from all aspects. I know I've said this before, but... It's just taking that mindset of all these things that are going wrong and why did it and how and what, you know, and applying it to God's word and thinking from all aspects and all sides. That's why these questions, like you said, the um, what the characteristics seems like it kind of went with the causes and it was a little bit of the same question, but it's just turning it just a hair. Yes, a little bit yes, and seeing it from all sides. I feel like when we're doing this, when we're slowing down and just thinking through the word, we truly are making it a part of our heart because we get to know it intimately and we're spending yeah. so much time in prayer and asking for guidance because this is a spiritual book and the spirit of Christ lives in us. And I, I know I've said this before too. I felt like my earlier times in the Bible, you know, I would, okay, God, help me to see what you want me to see. And then I would read through it and it would be like the Holy Spirit was, oh, I can't wait till she gets to this part. She's going to see this and it's going to be great. And I would just read right <laughs> past it. And it was like your thought of being in the restaurant, you know, I, I never looked up to see him. I was read, 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 read. Okay, good. I'm done with that. So yeah, to do, I love that. I love that view of the sitting in the restaurant and then you're just describing you're totally missing the whole point of why you're there right. yes like hello why are we here <laughs> love that love that so um okay so can you show us um some of just what you do because like you said this guide and this method is new to you but meditation is not yeah 
So yeah, and if you don't, if you don't mind, um, I mean, I just I want to kind of start like I guess from the beginning, yeah. from the beginning of my day, like what I do, and again, what I just shared the story of kind of what prompted some of this, but also um, I'll tell you this, like some of the things that I do in the morning when I when I say I journal through a few prayer prompts. Um, some of the things I was just already doing for years, sort of just naturally, you know, wake up every day and just think I'm so, you know, what are some things I'm grateful for? Like, I love having a gratitude journal. Like that was just a natural part of my day, but I went through this season that where I would wake up every morning immediately with, um, a disturbing thoughts about one of my children. I'd never experienced that before. And it was not fun. And it went on for a while. Like that was my first thought was just, just disturbing Mm. things. That's all I know to say about one of my kids. And I was like, okay, God, I don't like this. And how, please tell me how I can combat this. Like, what can I do to not wake up this way? And it wasn't, but a week later, I attended this retreat with the women at my church and the um, women's ministry director was talking. And while she was talking, she said something about, the importance that she had learned of starting her day by praising God for something. She was like, mm-hmm. before my feet touch the floor, I'm just like out loud, like, God, I praise you today for your faithfulness, whatever. And what a difference it had made. And I just felt like that was not a coincidence. Mm-hmm. I felt like that was an answer to prayer. And so I started that very next day, like when I woke up and my eyes open, I remembered And immediately I was like, God, I just praise you for your goodness, for your kindness. And I promise you, I stopped having that problem and I have not had it again since. I mean, do I have anxious thoughts? Of course I do. But nothing like what I had woken up with before. Do you need to walk by me? I got it. (laughs) Um, But nothing like I had woken up with before where it was just like this instant attack. It really did help. So that was something that was something that helped me create this routine. Um, and I'll show you, I am a big, like one thing that people have told me they appreciate is that I just, it's the tools that I use are very simple. I'm totally a notebook paper and pen, even a ballpoint pen kind of girl. And, um, so I would do all my journaling, even my morning journal routine, just on notebook paper. I just, this year, I noticed that I had this cute um, little day planner that was not being used. I don't know if anybody else does that. You, th- you see a cute planner, and it's like, oh, I got to have that. And then it just sits, and you can't figure out what to do with it. And I thought, well, this would be a good way to not waste notebook paper and to use what I already have. So let me, sh- um, I'll just show you. Let me just make sure there's nothing on here that I wouldn't want anybody to see. <laughs> Hang on. Uh, let's see. This is my favorite thing. The one that you're going to show every time she shows this on Instagram, I'm like, I need one of those planners. <laughs> it's not the planner, but I love it. Yeah. And I'll show this first, like, um, whoops, showing the wrong side. Like it's pink. It's this cute, it's this like powder pink and just says plans on it with a gold spiral. And it's a day planner, which I really, I like day planners. And, um, so here's what it looks like on the inside. Um, Actually, there's like a blank, there's a blank sheet, lots of lines and, you know, to write on. And then this is what it looks like. And again, this is something I'll be glad to show a picture of. Um, I'm going to talk through this and then I'll kind of show it. But what I do is when I get up, grab my coffee and sit down before I read my Bible, because I have learned that I need to pray and prepare my heart before I dive into the word. That's one thing that's kind of, that's what I was just talking about is how, you know, this is fellowship with God. We're, we're cultivating this relationship, this, cre- you know, this intimacy, and you don't just jump in and just start just talking. I mean, it's preparing your heart, I have found for me is very important. So I will just write down, God, I praise you today. This particular day, I said, for your amazing love. And then I'll just write down a few things I'm grateful for. I don't sit there and, and just think deeply about it and try to come up with a whole sheet of stuff. Just Honestly, all this stuff is what's on top of, just off the top of my head, these thoughts that I wake up with. God, thank you for the good sleep I got last night. Thank you. We just got a puppy named Oliver. And I said, thank you that Oliver feels better. Thank you for the lunch with new friends that I had yesterday and for this phone conversation. And then after I do that, I want to confess any sin that's on my heart because you know what? The Bible tells us that 
uh, and I don't have the verse right in front of me. I wish I did. But um, if we are holding on to, I think the, the version that I like says cherishing sin mm. in our hearts, the Lord will not listen. And so I don't want anything hindering my yeah. conversation, my uh, meditation that I'm about to have. I don't want to be distracted by feeling guilty about something I did the day before. So I'll just confess. And again, I'm not sitting here going, okay, let me think back to this last month. You know, right. it's just, you yeah. know, usually, and it's not beating myself up. It's just like, um, like on this particular day, I said, prioritizing the wrong things. Mm. And God's been talking to me about my marriage lately and how I have put other things mm. before it. So that's been very much on my mind. So my priorities have gotten out of line. So I just said, forgive me for prioritizing the wrong things. And then I want to intercede for others. There's a, and again, it's just, a, it's a short list of people that are on my heart that God has put on my heart that have been on my mind. Just a few people. I will write that down. Names, circumstances. I don't write out my prayers. People ask me that all the time. This is just, this is like a bullet point. I mean, I'll just, I'll show you, but, um, or I just write down a few names. And, um, so then when I do that, there's my little list. In this other column, off to the side, this has been b very, very good for me. Um, and it sounds kind of silly at first, but I'm sure a lot of you have heard of doing a brain dump. And so it's also important to me before I pray, before I get into God's word, I don't want uh, to be distracted with a to-do list with anything. I want to have a, um, a, a focused mm -hmm. mind, a clear mind. And so I'm whatever thoughts that I'm having, it might be, I need to get the car washed or I need to get cupcakes to school today. Or I feel really uh, jealous of this friend of mine who did, I mean, whatever mm -hmm. thoughts that I, I just get them down. And I do that for a few different reasons get them out of my head and onto paper. Cause you know what it's like when you wake up, everybody, I think most of us, especially women, you wake up and immediately you're thinking of all these things yep. that you need to accomplish. And so get them, I get them out of my head so that I can talk to God and not have these lingering, you know, yeah. thoughts that are just keeping me from really giving him my full attention. So what I do after that is I go back to my sheet and I just start at the top and I pray and I pray over this, over the sheet. I just start at the top and, and I, you know, I do it out loud. You don't have to, but I will just pray, you know, God, I praise you for this. And I thank you for these things. And please forgive me for this. And I lift up the people that I'm wanting to intercede for. And I pray for myself. And then I go over the brain dump and see, that's the different thing. Lots of people I think do brain dumps. I don't know how many people pray over them. Yeah. And that has made a difference, you know, because it talks in Philippians about, um, giving God um, your, um, gosh, all these verses are just escaping me right now. And I want to get this one. Philippians, and I turned right to it. That is so God. Um, do not be anxious about anything. Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, mm -hmm. with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So here's the thing. These are my anxious thoughts. You know, these are the things that are just mm -hmm. kind of distracting me and taking up all this space in my head. So I get them down on paper and I lift up each one. God, um, please don't let me forget that I need to pick up, you know, my husband's shirts from the cleaners. He's got court tomorrow and he's, he needs something to wear and I need to, I need to make that a priority. Like every mm. little thing. And I can remember hearing people talk a long time ago that I would follow on social media about, you know, praying over your to-do list or whatever. And I just kind of would be like, okay. <laughs> but I, I get it. Like, I mean, it's important. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I even heard the verse the other day. Isn't it funny how we can hear a Bible verse over, see it over and over and over. And it just, we just don't, we stop taking it seriously. Yeah. I mean, it just becomes so, you know, and I thought about cast your cares on him. And I was like, that's what this is. These are the thing, you know, some people say, I'm not going to pray about that because it doesn't seem very important right. or whatever. I don't think God is really concerned about that. Well, do you care about it? Then God does, you know? So if these are the things that I'm writing down and I'm lifting up each one and it feels good. It feels so good to not only get it out of your head and onto mm -hmm. paper, but then to give it to God. Um, so then what's fun, I'm not faithful about doing this part, but it's really fun when I do, when I remember, um, when I first started doing the brain dump and praying over it, 
at the end of the day, it was the neatest thing to go back and just sort of glance over it and see how many things that morning I was concerned about, I was worried about that it wasn't going to work out and God had taken care of it. Like that, you talk about increasing your faith. Yeah. Um, that is really cool. And I now need to get back into the habit of doing that because it, it's, it's eye opening just to show you what we worry about. I mean, it's, it's proof how much we worry about that God's going to take care of. So that's my morning routine. And I like to do that before I open up the word, because I just feel like it helps me focus. Mm. I'm clear. I, I'm first of all, praising God. I think he's worthy of the first words out of my mouth. And I'm giving him my praise, my gratitude, my sin, um, my prayers for others, and then my anxious thoughts. Now that I have given all that over to him, I definitely am going to receive his peace. And that's Mm -hmm. how, by the way, that's how I talk to him. That's one side of prayer. That's how I just talk to him. Now I'm going to open up his word. And guess what? I'm going to hear back from him because it's like, it's a two-way thing. I don't want a one-way, you know, one-sided conversation. So now I feel better prepared to open up and focus on him and worship him. I've kind of yeah. feel like I've sort of gotten my heart and my mind more aligned with him, if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. So a couple so. things that I noticed that yeah. I wanted to point out in case people missed them is, first of all, I like that you, I love that you start your day with praise before you get out of bed. And then the first thing you do when you sit down with your, your prompts there is praise. So starting with praise over and over and over it's intentional and um i like that you said and this is a huge thing to point out to people when we're confessing in our prayer time we're going over the last 24 hours you're not going back 20 years and i love that our pastor said and this is stuck in my mind for years is when those thoughts of these sins from years and years ago come up Instead of praying over them again, please forgive me, because you've already been forgiven. The first time you ask, you know, as soon as you accept Christ, you're already forgiven. He said, when those come up and haunt you, instead of confessing them again, thank him for forgiveness that he has mm, already forgiven you. And so yeah. this, this, what Amy's talking about, you're not writing this laundry list every morning of all these sins. It's just the last 24 hours. What is he pointing out to you that you did or didn't do that wasn't obedient? And I love that you pointed that out. And then every bit of this is just literally the thoughts that I, it's like what I wake up with on my mind. I'm, I'm starting my day by giving it to God. I feel like it's like, it's just, it's almost, it's, well, it's not almost, but it's a form of humility, Mm -hmm. you know, just to go like God, like God, I'm coming to you. I'm starting uh, my day with you because I can't do this on my own. I need you. This is the junk that's going on in my head right now. The thoughts I'm waking up with, take it, take it. I'm casting my cares (laughs) on you. Like you take it and you deal with it. And you just, it's just a way of just starting so focused. Mm. And I love, the fun part that you said is watching the fingerprints of God over the simple things of your brain dump and your to-do list. Because so many times I get into a rough season and we all go through them and we're, you know, I know I'm called to recall the faithfulness of my Lord. And it's really hard when you're in this season of trial to even remember, I know he's done something, but I can't tell you what. So flipping through those pages, even if they're little things like, you know, the dog got better or my husband got a raise or, you know, the little tiny daily things that you don't even think about. Those are the fingerprints that you're tracing and writing down. And it's, and it's not hard. It's just intentional time. You've got to be, and that comes back to what my, my word or phrases is wholehearted seeking and yours is obedience this is, this is all what that, it all ties in together. And I love that. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. So, okay. So that's all. So then, um, what else did you have something else? Well, I mean, I I mean, I can def I could show examples if you want me to, I can just explain this, but like, like I was saying in the beginning, I have had 
ways that I drew as I'm studying passages of scripture, like I have had different methods that I use. So it was really fun to get to know, um, the, these, uh, this method that Carrie's t- taught us, um, in this meditation 119, um, because it's, you know, and, and going forward, you know, I don't know if I will use this exact thing, all it, but definitely I can see that there are some things, I mean, I'm thinking ahead going, oh my gosh, that is going to be, I really like the idea of applying that, you know, to the scripture that I read in the future. But, um, in the past, I mean, I would do, I'm sure a lot of you have heard at most everybody that's like into Bible study and everything. Like one thing I used to do a lot was, um, so the yeah. scripture observation application and um, prayer. Like I did that a lot. Um, are you familiar too with like the seven arrows method where there's like seven questions mm-hmm. that you ask of a passage of scripture? Um, let me see. I'll just kind of flip through and see if I can find one while I'm talking. Um, it's seven questions that you ask, and I'm not going to remember all of them, but it's like, what does this passage say? What did it mean to the original audience? Um, what does it mean to me? Uh, how should it change the way that I, you know, like I'm in relationship with others? How should it affect my relationship? Just questions. I'll have, to, I'll, I'll find it and I'll post it, but it's, you know, so that was another method. Um, I love to make, I love making lists. <laughs> And that's one thing that I'll sort of pay attention for as I'm reading a passage of scripture. Um, if like prayer is a big one, like if I'm reading a passage that talks about that, I'll automatically note, notice several things that just seem like they're characteristic of like effective prayer, like what somebody does and a good example of what someone does in the Bible. Um, one of my favorite examples is um, Abraham and when he is pray, talking to God about Lot, he's, ta- he's asking him, you know, about sparing, um, you know, Sodom and Gomorrah. You know, if, if there were 40, you know, people there, you know, that would you spare for them? Would you, and all that. And that was one prayer that I really looked at because I thought there's a lot we can learn from this because he was like, one thing was like specific. He's getting very specific. You know, would you spare the city for 30 righteous people? And he was being very, and then he would come back and go, okay, well, what if there was 20, you know, like that. And I was like, well, there's another thing, like he's being persistent, but also he was being humble. Like he would come back, you know, he would say, forgive me, you know, I, you know, you're God. And I'm just, and so he was, he wasn't like demanding. He had this, even though he was persistent and he was specific, there was also a very um, noticeable tone of humility. So that's just an example of what I'm talking about. If I'm reading a passage like that, I'm like, Hmm, I'm sick. And so I would make a list like that. That was another way that I would journal in more recent times. Um, I have thought, you know what, instead of reading a passage of scripture and being like, how am I going to journal this and have all these different options? I thought, this is what's most important to me. What is most important to me is what is this telling me about yes. God and how should it change the way I live? And, and to go into a little bit even more specifics than that, I think it was Jen Wilkin that I saw, I don't know if it was in a book or if it was on one of her posts where she was saying, not only how does this, how should this change my life? It was like, how should this change the way I live, speak, pray, Mm -hmm. think? Mm -hmm. And I love that, like diving into each one of those very specific areas. So in more recent times, that's what I like to do. I like to take a passage of scripture because um, I'll tell you this. I did a study last year that was probably one of the best studies I have ever, ever done. Um, And I don't know if I mentioned it to you or not, Carrie, but um, Gretchen Saffles is a friend of mine and she has this well-watered women oh. ministry and she has this study called, um, redefined and it's about, uh, understanding your identity in Christ. And it was just like earth shattering for me because it was where I feel like I learned for the first time that my identity, my calling, my unique calling, cause everybody's like, what am I supposed to do with my life? Well, our calling was given to us when we were created. We were created in the image of God. We're supposed to bear his image. We're supposed to reflect him Mm. to the world who cannot see him. We're supposed to show Mm. what he's like. That's it. 
That's it. That's our that's our calling. And I have found that the more that I'm faithful to do that, to not like we talked about, not get so caught up in like I've got to build my platform and I've got to go here and speak and I've got to do, try to see if I can be a guest blogger for the, instead of getting bogged down and all these things just to focus on how can I reflect God to the people that I'm sharing my home with? Mm-hmm. You know, like when I focus on stuff like that, I feel like God opens door like he brings opportunities to me he he grows Mm -hmm. my following for me like he he takes care of the things that I care about when I take care of the things you know that he wants me to first and foremost take care of so that was what I learned all that to say I learned in that study how important it is to know like the character of God to understand that because for a long time I would approach the Bible like what does this have to say to me? What can this teach me about my yeah. life, about how I'm supposed yeah. to live? And then the first time I heard somebody say, oh, but we're supposed to approach God's word first and foremost to learn about him. I thought this is so funny. I was like, "What? wait a minute, that doesn't make sense because we're supposed to be doers of the word. You know, and I thought, and we're supposed to be applying it. So that doesn't make sense. And it real, I had a hard time at first understanding that. But then the more I have gotten to know the characteristics of God, the things that he does, his promises and all these things, the more I've gotten to know him, the more I have fallen in love with him and the more I want to do for him. It's like it, knowing more about him gives me the want to, you yeah. know, it's like, it's like, that's right. I, I had it backwards in my yeah. head. It's like, I need to be. So that's why all that said, that's why I like to approach a, pra- a passage of scripture and be like, what does it tell me about God? First and foremost, what does it tell me about God? Which reminds me, um, one thing that I do that I have not talked about is that's been very helpful helpful for me. I don't know if you do it, Carrie. I don't know if anybody that's listening does it. Um, highlighting my Bible, color coding in my Bible. That was another one of those things that years ago I would be like, um, that is such a waste of time and, <laughs> and just be like in my head, I, that sounds horrible, but I would just be like, um, I'm studying my Bible seriously. I'm not coloring in it, you know, <laughs> but then I like tried it and here's the mistake that I made that I think a lot of people make. I saw someone else's method. I saw someone yeah. else's system that they had and I was like, oh, I'm going to do that. And so I just like took their system and tried to do it. And it was like, this doesn't make sense to me. But like we've talked about with these questions, these journaling questions for meditation stuff, in the same way, when I came up with my own system, oh my goodness, it was so much better. So that's what I did. I said, okay, Amy, you probably don't care about, you know, there's some people who are like, everything about marriage, I'm going to highlight in this. Everything about creation, I'm going to highlight in this. Good fine. Those things are not super important to, you know, maybe if I was writing a book about creation or writing a book about, I could understand. So what I had to do was go, what's important to me when I'm reading scripture, what matters to me? Okay. Well, what matters most is what is it telling me about God? What matters next is how should that impact me? Like, how should I apply those things, those truths to my life? So that's, those are the first things I highlight, and that has been super helpful to me. When I open up my Bible to read it, I read through it, and then one time, and then I go back, and everything about God, I put in one color. Everything that's something that I should apply or could apply to my life gets another color. That has been very, very helpful to me because it's like, it's almost like, like files. It's almost like a, it sounds funny to say that, kind of like a filing system, but it's almost like you've got all this data in front of you, all this information, and it's like organizing it. Okay, everything that's about, that tells me who God is, I'm just going to put right here. Everything, and it's neat because just like you were talking about how you can flip back through a journal and see evidence of God's faithfulness, things that you've recorded of how he's, you know, worked and stuff. Same thing with my Bible. There's times when I can be in a desperate place, and I'm just like, I just need to be reminded of who yeah. God is. Like, that's what I need to focus on. It is so cool. And it's especially relevant in the Psalms. It is so cool to be able to open my Bible. I'm just going to pull it out right now. And see, like, my color for, for everything about God is blue. It's just chosen randomly. There's no reason for that. Just open my Bible when I'm feeling that way. Everything in blue, my eye can go to and go, okay, this is that. that's what I need to focus on. I don't have to be like 
what is the verse? Oh God, what is the verse that, te- you know, it's like just get everything I've already highlighted, everything about God, you know, in one color. Like here's an example. I mean, here's just a random page, but, um, and I'll be happy to post if anybody cares or is interested, I'll be happy to post too, like what my method is. But so that, that's the thing. And that's why I do it because I, ha- I think that helps me focus more too, is I care about what the Bible tells me about God. So I want to put it, I want to categorize it all together. Everything that I should apply to my life, I want to put in one, I want to be able to, you know, set those things apart. So then after I did that, a category that you would think does not sound very important, but has actually been the most important, I think, is um, like conjunctions, connecting words. And you know, where I'm like, therefore, but, and like stuff like that has been so helpful because I have found that when I, when I, and I, and you know what, that's now that I, let me backtrack a second. Honestly, when I go to color code a passage of scripture, those are the words I look for first. And I highlight those first because they, I almost feel like they're like road signs that kind of point me to, you know, why is this important? But that, like, that is the, that's why. I don't know if that makes yeah. sense or if I'm yeah. saying that right. But conjunctions have been huge. Anything that connects, that explains to me, why is this true? Therefore, you know, it's because of that it connects me, it points me to um, the purpose clause. Is I think that's the, maybe the word I'm looking for is what. But it's you're called. talking about like um, and, but, or, nor, for, there, therefore. That yeah, means. and I need to find. Okay, see, like I was looking for something. Um, like here, this will say, and I'll show it better in just a second. Um, like. Rant, this says, my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer. By night, yet I have no rest. But, and see, I put, but the connecting words get pink. Mm. But you are holy. So that just kind of, when I see a connecting word, it stops me and like shows me, okay, what's coming up next? This next phrase you need to pay attention to. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, I hope that makes yeah. sense. So that has turned out to be a really helpful thing for me to highlight, to pay attention to. Another reason I like to do it, yes, it sort of organizes the, t- you know, the different things that I care about, but also it slows me down. That's important when you're reading scripture. That's what we've talked about, Carrie, is like slowing down. And when I read through it one time and then go back and start highlighting the different categories, I have to slow down and yeah. pay attention to the words. It helps me catch things that I don't catch when I'm just reading yeah. through it the first time. Even reading slowly, it just it slows me down even more. Um, I think there was something else I was going to say. Um, well, let me go. Oh, go, ahead. Um, go ahead. I just want to go back for a second where, because um, this really was where I was, and I've talked to you a little bit about this, is you said it's not about what does the Bible have to say to me today? or about my life today, but what is it teaching me about God? And, you know, back in my, I call them my survival years with three boys and, you know, attitudes and (laughs) um, all of that. What I would go to the Bible for was answers to the problems for today. Okay. I need to know how to control his anger, Lord. Where do I even find that in the Bible? And it's not, I mean, well, yeah, you can look up verses, specific verses, and that's what I would do is topical anger verses. Okay. Do not be angry. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. That's what you're doing, son. Right? <laughs> it's so wrong. And, <laughs> and that's what I treated the Bible. Like it was, it was my, where's my answer book. And then when I, yeah. when I started learning this meditation and slowing down, I realized that all of these trials that God was giving to me as a gift with my sons was to point me to him, not, Amen. not the answer to, you know, and I would, I would Amen. go to yes. so many other books and, you know, the Bible doesn't have what I need. So I'm going to go to this popular one on, on, you know, the anger driven child or whatever. And, and it really was more about Carrie, stop and look to me. And then it, he would point out my sins. And then when I can deal with God and my sins, all of these other horizontal relationships kind of take care of themselves. 
I mean, yeah, there's yeah. still teaching that needs to be done, but it's not anger in the heart of the moment. It's son, let's talk about what happened here because this is what God is showing me about me. Let me talk to you yeah. about what he's trying to show you. It changes everything. And, yes. and I'm not meditating on the scriptures in James that deal with anger. I'm meditating in Psalms that deal with God, right? Or, or in, in James that's talking about who God is. When you change the focus like that, it just changes everything. It's everything. Yeah. And I get so many, and I hate to sound like I have to think, okay, I don't want to sound snippy or, or sarcastic or anything like that, but I get so many messages from women going, I'm in this situation. Tell me a Bible study that would work for me. I'm yes. feeling this. Yes. Give me a verse. And I'm like, the Bible. Go to, yes. I'm not going to tell you, read this book. Read the, like the Bible, read about God. Mm. Like people will ask me when you're going through a hard time, tell me a verse that you cling to. And that's fine. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that because certainly there are verses yeah. that I do recall when I'm going through something specific, but yes, just like you said, I have learned that just learning more about who God is, is everything. everything. And because, and one thing I thought of while you were talking, what I was just talking about a minute ago about how I learned that. I don't have to like waste all this time trying to figure out what my big assignment is, what my calling is, what all this kind of stuff. I was made, you were made to reflect God to the world. So guess what? I'm, it's like, I'm killing two birds with one stone. I'm learning about who God is. I'm studying, I'm focused, I'm meditating on his character. And that in turn tells me not only more mm -hmm. about him, but how I should live. Yeah. That answers all my questions. If I'm supposed to be reflecting God to my children, to my husband, I need to learn about who God yeah. is, you know, and that, that was something I thought about. Yeah. And it's reflecting God to the world, but it's reflecting God to your kids and your husband. And that's the hardest part. And that's what you and I were kind of talking about earlier is it's, <laughs> It's so much easier to go out to your unbelieving neighbors or whatever, or, or the, the cashier at the grocery store and say, hey, you know, uh, I'm praying for you and, you know, get these shocked expressions. But when you're in your home and nobody responds and you don't get any, you know, like, hey, that was a great blog post or anything like that. It's just the daily grind of reflecting God to my children. And you know what? God doesn't come to me and point out my sins and fix yourself. God comes to me and you're already forgiven and just yeah. bathe in my love. And if I can take that learning more about God that way and apply it to my boys. Yes. I was going to say, that's our example. Yes. That's what we're supposed, that's yes. how we're supposed to be toward others. Yes. 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 <laughs> Amen, sister. <laughs> So let's see, Audrey, there's been a few questions. Um, I'll flip through them. Did you have anything? Yes, Audrey, I, I agree with what you just said about not reading so much about God's word, but re reading God's yeah. word. I mean, that's, I, I, I do get a level of frustration that I just have to like, I, I got to calm down when people are at, constantly asking me, like, tell me a book I can read for this situation. And I'm like, really? Mm. Like God's word, God's word. It's everything. You know, and I was reading, I'm reading through um, Luke right now and something that it's, it, this is the meditation thing sticking in my head. I got to Luke too. And everybody knows this verse because it's in the peanuts Christmas special. And it's the, <laughs> when the um, angel, the host, multitude of heavenly hosts praise God saying glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased and I've heard that a thousand times it's the Christmas verse right and as I was meditating on this and thinking you know he's giving praise to God and he's he's saying you know earth I should have peace among men with whom he is pleased and I know God was pleased with man when he created us it says that you know he created man and it was good but as I was thinking about this, God is pleased with men and we're a hot mess. And back in Mary and Joseph's day, he was pleased with men in our day to day. He is pleased with us. And when I start viewing, you know, like the attributes of God and his holiness and all of that. And then I think of me, I'm such a worm, but I'm not, when I do that, I'm not viewing these attributes of God in light of the gospel that that yeah. God is pleased with us. 
Well, and Carrie, I'll tell you something else that you just made me think of. That, and it's, it's, I'm almost embarrassed to admit this, but it's this is true. Um, back to the study that I did last year that taught me so much about my identity. Um, I'm ashamed that it wasn't until I did this study that something clicked because of course I know the gospel. I've accepted Christ. I thought I knew exactly what that meant, but it was when I was reading that study or doing that study that I read, I've always known that I was uh, God, that Jesus, when he got on the cross, was taking on mm -hmm. my sin. He was taking on the sin of the entire world. I always, I think I always only focused on that part of it, that he took on all of our sin and never stopped to think about how we got his righteousness. Yeah. Like in exchange, he took our sin. We got his righteousness. And that was huge to me. I'm like, when God looks at me, that's what he mm -hmm. sees. That's what he mm -hmm. sees. You know, I just thought of that while you were saying. Yeah. That. And that's, that goes back to our sections in scriptures, you know, how blessed are those who observe his testimonies are those who wait, whose way is blameless. My way is already blameless because I got Christ's yeah. blamelessness. As soon as I accepted him, I didn't just get the penalty paid, but his righteousness added to me. So I'm already blameless. Now it's to do with my walk and it's not because I need to earn my salvation right because right. i already did as soon as i accepted christ his work it's done it is finished mm -hmm. but now it's my responsibility i'm accountable for how i walk and so like you're saying with obedience and mine is seeking this is so crucial but it's not earning it's done and now it's just our yeah. responsibility to follow him yeah thank you for saying that betty joe that's so sweet yeah. So, okay. Um, if you guys have questions, ask them here. Um, we're going to try to wrap it up, but I want to say to Amy has so many good ideas. And when you follow her on Instagram, you're going to want to do all of the things you're going to want to get yourself the little planner and you're going to want to do the meditation and you're going to want to, you know, do her method of all the different ways to do the time in the word and the color coding. But I encourage you just find one thing. Just work yes. on just one thing because it's, if you're like me, you want to do all this and grow right now. You want to learn and do and grow. And I'm going to spend five hours today in the word, but, but our primary responsibility is following God. And then it's the relationships in our life. So you can't do all the things find one. Thing. And, and, and I just want to say too, and if you are, trying to do something if you were if you see something that you think oh I would love to add that to my routine and you're doing it and honestly if it's not um adding value you know to your relationship mm -hmm. Lord, if it's not pulling you in closer and just and and deepening the fellowship the intimacy it's not necessary stop I mean stop doing it don't do it just and and I learned this um when I would see people on Instagram, people in ministry that would be like, I'm going to write this type of Bible study, this type of scripture reading. I would see people do things and be like, um, that I should do that too. Well, just because you can do something doesn't mean that you should. We need so much to talk to God every yeah. day and to listen to him and do what, only what he calls us to yeah. do. And we don't need to do things just for the sake of looking like, that person on Instagram, you yes. know, or just because, you know, we just need to, and, and I still get chuckled when, you know, people, um, I don't know, like Carrie is, is, I feel like she's sort of gushing about, about me and, and what I do. It's so simple. Like, it's just, it's so simple. And yes, I use a cute little day planner, but I mean, forever, I just have used notebook paper. Mm. That's, I don't, I didn't care about going out and getting a fancy journal or anything. I just happened to realize that I, w I had, I was wasting something that I had purchased and I was got, it's got perfectly good blank pages in it. I could just fill it up. But um, it usually simple is best. Yeah. I mean, you just, it's, it's about getting to know God more and spending time with him every single day and worshiping him. And I'm just saying, if what you're doing does not um, 
aid you in that if it doesn't like help build that relationship just forget it don't 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 keep trying to do it yeah. just because everybody else is doing it please don't color code your bible just because you heard that i do it i mean definitely try it and if it doesn't work for you don't do it right I mean. right yeah exactly and and just like with the meditation don't don't think that this is the right way to do it. We're just we're right. just giving you guys examples to help you grow. And if it doesn't work for you, it doesn't work for you. Throw it away and and try something else. But the main thing is just consistently meeting with him, and however oh, that yeah. looks like to you, the just be consistent. And you know, every yeah. morning, get up and do this, or in the evening, do this. Shut off the TV. Stop the screens. Just be consistent with him, and then yeah. you'll figure out what works. Yeah. So, yep. Okay. Well, Amy, thank you so much for thank being with you. us. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm so glad you invited me to do this. I'm loving Here's it. Here's Amy's. It's at Amy Hale um, on Instagram. And you're also on Facebook. And I'll have. I am. I have a page. Um, it's Amy L. Hale Ministry. Um, but then my, my, um, Facebook page, my private Facebook page or personal, I should say is, is really mostly public. So you could also follow Amy Duncan Hale. I mean, too. Whichever. And I'll have, but I do the most on Instagram. That's where right. I post the most consistently. Right. So I'll have all the links to all this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this. So it's in the group and I'm also going to put it on YouTube, but then I'm going to do a blog post. Amy's going to send me some pictures like the people have been requesting of just your journal pages and stuff, whatever. And I'll put them all on a blog post. So there'll be nice, big, clear pictures and then a link to this video. So hopefully we'll cover all the bases that everybody's asking yeah. for. And we'll have, I'll have it up uh, probably next week for you guys. And definitely if you think of a question mm -hmm. after we finish and, and if you're watching the replay, you know, and we're not live anymore and you th just feel free to add a question to this thread and we'll check back and, you know, and answer yeah. any questions that we yeah. can. Yeah. So, okay. We are on to, thank you, Denise. We are on to week three. If you guys just joined us, yeah. there's a ton of people that just joined us. Just jump in where you are. Start at week one. That's kind of way we wanted to just do these videos and uh, ask your questions and we'll be here on the Facebook page. So yeah. thank you, Amy. Thank you, Carrie. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye.